Hi, this is Francisco Pulgar Vidal with FEI Quality. And today I would like to continue our discussion of first time yield and look at what are the hidden costs of low performance. In a prior slide, we have seen how is it that you may have three teams, each one working at 90%, 90%, 90% performance. And yet when you bring the performance of the three together in a more, uh, com more complete, broader company view of uh, actual performance, you end up not with 90%, as you might have expected, but a lower value at 73%. And so internally, they may think, you may think you are operating at 90, but actually externally, you are at 73. And of course, the big trouble with this is that customers see you at this level of performance. Now, in addition to that, what are some of the consequences? The first consequence that you can see is that we had originally started with 1,000 customers that expected great services and products from us. And then as we go forward, through the whole process of from selling, making, and delivering, you end up with only 729 customers actually fully satisfied with your products and services. So there is a, a major drop in customer satisfaction. So the very first consequence is that the number of customers who are satisfied with you, who may then recommend you, is a much lower number than what it should have been or what you were expecting to get. That's consequence number one. Consequence number two, actually come from the fact that there's a certain cost of low yields. Let's look at these numbers in a bit more of detail. I'm going to focus only on the first of all of these operations for simplicity. But of course, the example applies to all of them, not only individually, but even as a, as a sequence of steps. Let's look at the first one. We said that because the selling function has a yield of 90%, this means that out of 1,000 opportunities to create a perfect purchase order, only 900 are actually made. Well, so you have to do something with the other 100, right? You cannot just let these customers uh, be lost. So what's going to happen is that a full 100 are going to have to make this trip a second time. And now you will have 100 which are reworked. So what we see here is we see a rework cycle. Out of this 100, because there is something that is fundamentally uh, part of the structure and the functionality of this particular activity selling, out of this 100, the yields are still going to apply. So the story repeats again. Out of 100, how many good ones are going to come out? Really only 90. And so they, they can be added to the original 900. But that means that there's going to be another group of orders that were not taken correctly a second time and must be reworked. So actually, we don't end up with just a rework cycle, but in fact, we have reworked cycles at work. And so the same thing will happen with this 10. Out of this 10, how many are going to be produced correctly? Well, 9, because that is 90%, which means that there's probably going to be even one more that will have to make this trip yet again, so that eventually, you will be able to produce all 1,000 correct orders. Now, this is done in multiple cycles. You can imagine that there's a number of consequences to this. The first one that you can think of is that there is going to be unnecessary overprocessing. This rework cycles is what, in the language of Lean, is known as overprocessing. That's one of the eight wastes of Lean. So we have that this would be called overprocessing, which means work that is done unnecessarily and in a wasteful manner. Because really, the best rework that you can have is no rework whatsoever. That's one of those consequences. The second consequence is that there's going to be very low productivity. Let's look at how much effort did we have to put in order to produce this 1,000. Let's just think about this. How many times did we have to sell to these 1,000 customers? Well, on the first pass, we actually have to sell to 1,000. But then we had rework cycles. And so in the first rework cycle, we actually have to perform the same function 100 times more. So now you have first rework 100 times. There's a second rework for the other 10. 
That's the second rework. And there's a third rework for the very last one. And so what you get in the end is that, unfortunately, you have worked 1,111 times, which means more effort, more labor, more use of resources, additional wear and tear in your equipment, additional use of energy, et cetera, et cetera. So you have spent the equivalent of 1,111 cycles of effort in order to produce 1,000 results. Clearly not a very productive way of operating. That's, an, that's another one of the uh, consequences of this low quality. There's yet another one, which is not easy to see here, but you can just think about it, and it's the following. Because of these reward cycles, now the selling function has to take care of orders which are processed the first time, orders which are probably tried to be rushed because they are rework, and orders which become super ultra urgent because they are on the second or even third uh, cycle of rework. What we're seeing here is an increase in complexity. Again, hard to necessarily put a number on it, uh, keeping with the simplicity that I want to give to this example, but very clearly you can realize that there's going to be a dramatic increase in the complexity that is going to require now additional investment in things such as more information systems, more control systems, more people looking at what's first, what's next, what's third, what's happening, and, and which, which are just, just normal processing, and which one must be expedited, and which ones are super urgent, etc., etc. And there is even another element of cost that you can think of, and it's the following. With, again, without putting too many numbers, just discussing this, you can already think that whoever had to be worked on a second or a third and definitely a fourth time will probably now be demanding, it's probably an unhappy customer, and will probably be demanding some type of discount. So whichever profit you expected to make out of this whole operation, now that profit is being reduced because precisely of that. So it seems like in business we have trouble trying to spend time doing things right the first time. But we always seem to, because of urgency, we always seem to, ha to find time to fix things a second, a third, or a fourth time. Wouldn't it make much more sense instead to try to build in quality into our processes and definitely try to get to a higher level of yields so that then we don't have all these um, consequences of complexity, cost, low productivity, waste, and obviously customer dissatisfaction. In the next slide, we will continue exploring how the first time yield actually puts a strong light on some additional concepts on how to better uh, run and continuously improve your operations. Thank you for your time.